are honored and delighted to have you all here with us this afternoon. Uh, Professor Alexander, thank you so much for being with us. It is an honor to welcome you. We're glad to be able to uh, celebrate your courageous work and your eloquent voice for justice. Students, faculty, staff, five college colleagues, students from Amherst High School, welcome to all of you. Uh, I think we have I think we have a significant part of the Amherst and the Valley uh, Justice community here this afternoon, and we're so glad to have you with us. Welcome to each and every one of you. <laughs> Professor Alexander, you should know you have really pulled a wonderful crowd who want to hear what you have to say. Um, I want to thank someone who I believe is still stuck in the traffic trying to get here, uh, Ed Cerullo, uh, whose generosity has made this event and the 14 Ekbal Ahmad lectures uh, before it uh, possible. Uh, he will be here soon and, and we really do thank him for what he has made a part of the Hampshire culture. I also want to thank the Ekbal Ahmad uh, committee, especially uh, Margaret Cerullo and Carol Lee Megelsdorf and Diana Fernandez. <laughs> they set this incredible challenge for themselves. They always have a wonderful lecture and then each year they set out to outdo themselves and you've done it again. It's, it's absolutely terrific. Your work to make this event thoughtful and substantive and engaging and a wonderful reflection of both the values of the man who it is named for and the values of this school uh, has been a, an inspiration. Thank you for doing it. Uh, it is a wonderful way to honor Ekbal Ahmad. I also want to thank uh, two people from my office, uh, Joanna Olin and Jackie Jeffrey, who have worked very hard to make this possible. And a few more thanks. Uh, event services, members of the staff of facilities and grounds who had just finished cleaning up the school after the storm and, and uh, helping us reopen and then had to set up for this event, media services, campus police, uh, the food services. Thank you all for the arrangements for the lecture. <laughs> Do I need to even say anything? Off button, on vibrate, please. Thank you very much. Okay. Professor Ekbal Ahmad retired from Hampshire College 15 years ago after more than a decade as a professor of international relations and Middle Eastern studies. He had taught elsewhere, but from all that I've heard and read at Hampshire, he found an intellectual home. Here he thrived as a mentor, as a friend, and as a restless intellectual force catalyzing discussion thought and analyses. He died in Islamabad, Pakistan two years after he left Hampshire. When he died, he was still engaged in the work that he loved, pursuing the dream of justice and education as two facets of the same vision of humanity. He was a prolific writer, a skillful editor, a masterfully incisive and principled critic, he wrote about the smoldering remnants of col uh, colonialism, the strategies of late 20th century revolutions, and the dangers of America's role in the world. He was identified by Edward Said as perhaps the shrewdest and most original anti-imperialist analyst of the post-war world. It's a long mouthful, but actually a, an impressive accolade. Ekbal Ahmad's understanding of global conflict originated in personal acquaintance 
with the critical political struggles of our time, he lived through and analyzed the partition of India and Pakistan and its legacies, the Algerian Revolution, the Vietnam War, the Middle East conflict, the first Gulf War, all the roots of terrorism and the US war on terror. And he spoke honestly and with integrity about all of them. His Hampshire colleagues collected his writings acute analyses, humane interventions, and strategic visions, a remarkable volume that helps one to understand revolutionary warfare and counterinsurgency, the shaping forces of Islamic politics and the impact of US foreign policy in the post-colonial world. It retains startling relevance 15 to 20 years later. But actually what most intrigues me is this, how does it happen that 15 years after a professor has retired and moved halfway around the world, 13 years after his death, colleagues still remember him not only fondly, but almost reverently. We are proud, I'm sorry, we live in a world where disagreement too often escalates to shouting and conflict to violence. In that context, it's not just the power of Ekbal's intellect that is so striking, nor his unflinching bravery in the face of menacing authority. It is the depth of his humanity. A man who could be childlike playing with children, a man who devoted himself to students, who cared for his friends and found common values in friendship with people he might easily have dismissed. A man so open to others that he often formed improbable lifelong friendships built upon chance encounters. A remarkable man. We are proud to honor the teaching, the scholarship, and activism of the late Ekbal Ahmad, and once again to welcome Professors Ahmad faculty colleagues, former students, family, and friends from around the globe who have joined together to make this lecture series a continuing celebration of his life and work. Now it's my pleasure to invite Margaret Cerullo, Professor of Sociology in the School of Critical Social Inquiry and Chair of the Ekbal Ahmad Committee to join us on the stage. Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> 